Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here, and before I get to my movie review, I'm going to say this, I had a wonderful Christmas time this year. Yep, I spent more time with the family, had a wonderful Christmas dinner, opened up all the gifts that we really wanted, not to mention we went to church, yeah, with the entire crowd of people, you know, singing all the all the songs uh, of the birth of Jesus yeah. and yeah we um, had a great time I'm, it was probably the best Christmas that we ever had so far this year but I'm gonna get to an after Christmas uh, classic at this rate a holiday classic that came out just 25 years ago since December 6 1990 yeah, I'm talking about the film Edward Scissorhands, yep, which was directed by Tim Burton. It was the first film that Johnny Depp had ever collaborated with the director. Yep, because he went on to do films like Ed Wood, Sleepy Hollow, and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, yeah, as well as uh, Sweeney Todd, Alice in Wonderland, Corpse Bride. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, th this was a movie about an artificial man that was created by an inventor you know, who just died, and suddenly he was brought home by an Avon lady into the suburban family. So now uh, he spends time, you know, trying to uh, you know figure it out uh, what to do with the rest of the suburban nights around and. You know, they're all just helping him, even though he had trouble, you know, eating and all this stuff, you know, by using his scissor hands. Yeah. And not to mention, he meets uh, a very young teenager who's uh, turned out to be his love interest, even though, you know, she has a, uh, a boyfriend who's a jerk. Yeah. But uh, this was a wonderful film. I always remember watching this when, when I was a kid. I was completely um, touched of how beautiful this movie really looked. I mean, it has a, a wonderful score by Danny Elfman. It, it has um, some great shots and a lot of great interiors that they chose for this film. I mean, they filmed this at uh, Lutz, Florida, where, where on, all the way on top you see a very gothic castle that that was run by the inventor and of course Edward as a creation is all alone and and down there you just see a suburban town filled with uh, colored pastels yeah I mean they it looks uh, as nice and beautiful as it's as any other suburban towns have looked it was perfect and, and of course, you know, the makeup effects that they did were, were done by Stan Winston. And, yeah, because he did all the effects for, for Johnny Depp. And it has a wonderful screenplay by Caroline Thompson, who later went on to write some screenplays for other Tim Burton films, like The Nine River for Christmas. Yeah. But this is the movie um, you just never forget. So anyway, the movie stars Johnny Depp, Renata Ryder, Diane Weist, Anthony Michael Hall, uh, Kathy Baker, Vincent Price, Alan Arkin, uh, Robert Olivery, Conchata Farrell, Caroline Aaron, Dick Anthony Williams, and Olan Jones. It's written by Caroline Thompson and it's directed by Tim Burton. And before I get to that, uh, this is the 10th anniversary edition that I picked up at Suncoast uh, back in 2006. This is actually one of the rarest uh, DVDs that I've ever owned. And yes, this has all the extras right there. Yep, and it does have the, the classic cover art that I always remember seeing it from the movie posters. Um, also, um, it just recently got released um, on Blu-ray 
for its 25th anniversary edition, but I had the feeling it's pretty much the same transfer as the previous release from 2007 or 6, uh, whatever year it was. Um, but otherwise, I, I think it's a great set to own. I mean, they have it on Steelbook and has some great extras, even though there are a few that's missing. So, but but let's get to the review. The movie begins when an elderly woman had told her granddaughter a bedtime story about a young man named Edward, who's played by Johnny Depp, who has scissors for hands. Hence the name Edward Scissorhands. He was a creation of an old inventor, who's played by Vincent Price, who actually was created as simply as a human-like boy who had everything except for his hands. But then the inventor had suffered a fatal heart attack just when he was about to give Edward a present, which is prosthetic hands. So hopefully that would actually help him be able to move him completely. So that never happened. So meanwhile, a local Avon saleswoman named Peg Boggs, who's played by Diane Weist, had visited the Gothic mansion where the inventor had lived, all the way on top on the hill, and that's where Edward lives all alone. She finds him, who actually at first felt very startled, but then she decided that since he means well, seeing that he's virtually harmless and he's incomplete as we speak, she takes him home into a suburban town, you know, filled with lots of houses and pastel colors. So then suddenly Edward becomes friends with Peg's young son, Kevin, who's played by Robert Olivey, um, as well as uh, her husband, Bill, who's played by Alan Arkin. He later falls in love with the Bob's beautiful teenage daughter named Kim, who's played by Renata Ryder, who, in spite of her initial fears of him, she actually got used to it for a while. But that's when we found out that Kim actually has a boyfriend. It turns out to be a complete fug named Jim, who's played by Anthony Michael Hall. A whole different role for him after <laughs> playing you know, nerdy guys in the John Hughes movies back in the 80s. So this is different from him. Well, before that, uh, Peg's neighbors are very impressed by Edward's... Um, skills that he came up with with all these hedge trimmings and, and hair cutting yeah because that's where he started creating all these creatures and and even ballerinas and all that stuff that you see in the bottom of the cover right there yeah I mean he definitely has the skill to actually create all these creatures um, for hedges and the best part was you know he started to make um, a lot of hair cutting skills uh, by cutting all the neighbors hair yeah especially when uh, Joyce who's played by Kathy Baker you know, who is an aging unfaithful housewife in the Boggs neighborhood actually winds up feeling uh, very fascinated uh, with Edwards and suggests that Edward had opened a hair cutting salon with her um, in town not to mention she was attempting to seduce him in that one particular scene when they went inside the parlor yeah that's where that's what causes Edward to leave in panic <laughs> oh, I remember that scene wanting money for a band Jim had takes advantage of Edward's ability to pick up the blocks to break in into the parents house just trying to steal his wealthy but bullying fodder but unfortunately the burger alarm had went off and that's where everyone had um, escaped until everything but Edward and that's where you know, Edward winds up in trouble and that's where things seem to go completely wrong as it turned out you know, where he winds up getting arrested and you know, he got fleed out and all this had happened since then so now, you know, this is where he gets really angry 
you know, to what Jim had done to him. Of course, before all of this had happened, you know, he went on to talk shows where you know he had an accident by touching the mic just when he was about to reveal uh, what he loves the most, and uh, and all of this that happened during that Christmas season, just when he was about to uh, create some ice sculptures, and that was one of the most beautiful scenes in the movie where you know Edward was creating a Christmas angel, and suddenly all of these shavings just to fall up in the air and, and landed on uh, Kim where she winds up uh, dancing around with the shavings. I thought that was one of the most beautiful moments in the film. That is until Jim had to ruin it for us. You know, just when um, Kim actually got cut by uh, Edward's uh, scissor hands. Yeah. Jim accused him of actually hurting her which I know that was an accident. And it, so then uh, Kim got so angry that she decided to break up with him because of his stupid attitude. After all, he was the one responsible for for letting uh, Edward uh, take the blame for the robbery that, that caused this to happen. So the family was just preparing for a Christmas party. And then all of a sudden, uh, Edward decided to, to run away from the town because now he's feeling very disappointed about what's going on. And then it gets even worse because now the cops and, and the entire town are trying to go after him. And then when he tried to come back to um, the Boggs family, he finally met Kim to see if they were right. So that's when uh, Edward was trying to, you know, trying to fall in love with Kim. The problem is he, he can't hold her because, well, yeah, he has scissor hands. But just when he came back, you know, he found out that uh, Kevin was, which was just about to leave at his uh, friend's house for Christmas, and then just when he was about to go back, suddenly Jim's band had had arrived on the scene, and suddenly he almost ran over Kevin, and Edward just came over just to save him. And it was kind of hard for him to save him because, of course, you know, his scissor hands. Kevin started getting a lot of cuts on his face. And, and then Jim started to go after Edward once again. So now, you know, they had a huge fight. Yeah, you know, claiming that, you know, Edward is actually hurting him, but he's not. Yeah, and then, and then, then of course, Edward started to stab him. And then after that, um, the whole town was was um, about to go after Edward. And, and then... At, and then just when Edward started to go all the way up top of the Gothic mansion, you know, where he lives, suddenly uh, Kim decided to go after him, you know, just so they could be safe together until Jim suddenly arrives, you know, with a gun. He was about to shoot Edward, you know, about to attack him completely until, until Edward finally stabs him in the stomach and then he, he fell off the window. So now he's dead, and Edward decided that he's, he's just going to stay all alone. So Kim decided to take another scissor hands that that was going to be used. Yeah, it was a it was an unused one, and and Kim was just using just showing the scissor hands, pretending that Edward's dead. You know, after that huge fight, you know, they he got killed. So he just wanted to let let the neighbors know so that way they can leave them all alone. Just after uh, Edward told her goodbye. Yeah, and well, that's how it happened because then we found out uh, about what happened to Edward. It turns out that after all this time he was just all alone in the mansion like he always was, you know, just doing his uh, hedge trimmings, um, at the castle and all this other stuff, well, so, so Kim has never had spoken or seen him ever again, and it, it was really sad too. Now this is a beautiful film to watch, no doubt about it, it was just like a fairy tale, a movie about an artificial man who was incomplete, that's built up by an inventor, he doesn't speak much, 
I mean, he's basically very shy. But it seems to me like the only thing that he can do with is just it just uses his scissor hands. Yeah, so he can actually cut a lot of hedges and cutting hairs and everything. And definitely this was the perfect choice for Johnny Depp to actually play because this is something I never thought I would see before in his career because you know during the 80s and 90s, you know, he was just playing younger teenage roles, you know, starting with the movie A Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, because that's the original film where he played um, Nancy's friend. And he was very good in that movie, too. Definitely the right choice. And then he went on to do other films, too. And then, not to mention, he later went on to do the TV show 21 Jump Street, which aired on Fox. Yeah, which at the time was a full-fledging new network. Yeah, and they thought... This would be a good choice for Johnny Depp to do because why not? I mean, he was he was definitely the right role to to play uh, Edward Scissorhands because I would imagine other actors like Tom Cruise, Tom Hanks, and all the rest would be chosen to play the role. That'd be kind of strange to see uh, Tom Hanks in that role, <laughs> but yeah, Johnny Depp was the right choice. Uh, Renata Ryder, who was very good in in the previous film, Beetlejuice, definitely the perfect choice to play a love interest for Edward. I mean, she's very beautiful, you know, charming, and yeah, I know she was afraid of him at first, but deep down in it, I thought she was just one beautiful girl. And I, I always want to see more scenes with Edward and Kim together, because it it just works. It's definitely a love story. I just wish I could see more of that instead of uh, Jim, you know, ruining it for everybody. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Jim was a jerk. He, he was a complete asshole in the film. Yeah, and he's played by Anthony Michael Hall. Um, but still, he was good in the film, too. Um, a lot of great casts, too, like um, Diane Weist, as well as Alan Arkin. Kathy Baker and all the rest, even Cachetta Pharrell, all very good. I mean, they definitely uh, fit the roles perfectly. It definitely has a 60s retrospective look to it because I know the film had to be set in the 60s. I mean, for yeah, because uh, the way they look and they dressed in that particular fashion, I think, yeah, it definitely has that uh, the feel to it. So it makes sense. Because they even started playing some Tom Jones music uh, in the movie. Yeah. Including the It's Not Unusual, which would later be featured in, in Mars Attacks. Well, I know that song's been used in every single movie and TV show, too. Like The French Prince of Bel Air, for instance. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the, the song where yeah, Colin started dancing around. <laughs> okay. Well, I get the idea. But yes. Um, it just looks so beautiful. It seems to me like it sort of has a take on the Hunchback of Notre Dame you know, kind of feel to it, like Edward is basically Quasimodo in that sort of way. It also has a take on Frankenstein and Phantom of the Opera in that sort of way. Even the creature from the Black Lagoon also follows this uh, subject when it comes to movies like this. The character of Edward Scissorhands, you know, where he just goes around, you know, creating all these scars on his face every time he tries to move around with his scissor hands because yeah, he always keeps getting all these cuts so they had uh, the Avon lady go around just <laughs> using all of her makeup and putting it all over his face and just to cover all of that scars you know so that way you know he won't be able to hurt himself most of the time so it wouldn't get infected because that was a great moment right there. And yes, it has a wonderful score that's done by Danny Elfman. It definitely fits perfectly with every scene out there. I just love it. I love the shots of all the in inventions that uh, the inventor had created, like the scenes of, of how they made the cookies, and especially those heart-shaped cookies that they had. It was just, wow. Uh, Vincent Price was just, 
such a legendary actor, you know, best known for playing uh, horror movie roles. Yeah, and, but this is definitely the perfect role for him. The main reason why he got chosen, though, was because you know Tim Burton was actually you know fascinated by by Vincent Price. You know he's a big fan of him, and not to mention he did a short film up, about Vincent Price called Vincent, and and he also had Vincent Price narrating it. So that was pretty cool for him. That was the main reason why he got cast in this movie, and. It's also sad because I think this was one of his last movies that he did before his real passing in uh, 1993, just before Halloween came around. Yeah, it was pretty sad. I mean, it could have been worse. He would have died on Halloween. But yeah, he was a great actor. Really miss him. And I also... Um, I also enjoyed the cinematography that they used for the film. Uh, that was uh, done by Stefan Sapaski. Yeah, yeah, because they had some wonderful, great shots. Um, everything from the whole town to the Gothic Castle is just spectacular to see. I also uh, love all the funny moments that they went into the film, like when. When Edward was actually sleeping inside Kim's bedroom, she actually had a water bed, and then whenever he touches the bed, suddenly, <laughs> suddenly the the hole is suddenly just created a hole on on the mattress, and it and it shoots out water on his face. But then after Kim got really scared after she came back from college, that suddenly. Yeah, I, I think, uh, yeah, high school or college or so, I don't know. Um, so, yeah, because she just had a party and everything. Suddenly she, she, she was about to uh, look in the mirror, she was about to pop up a pimple, then suddenly she saw someone in the background on her bed and she started screaming, and that's when <laughs> he got up and all, all the water started shooting up from the, the mattress. <laughs> I have to admit, I was really laughing at that scene, too. It was just hilarious. But I, I know, I, I could tell she was very frightened. <laughs> and there was another scene where, uh, after that, you know, you know, Bill, who's played by Alan Arkin, was just, uh, you know, he was, you know, trying to give uh, Edward an advice by offering him um, a drink of lemonade inside the basement. And <laughs> what he doesn't know was that the base. That, but what he doesn't know is that the lemonade is filled with alcohol in it. <laughs> That's where he, he starts slurping on onto the straw, and he's just doing, <sighs> and then he faints because then, just when the, during the next scene when uh, Joyce was about to offer Edward some lemonade, <laughs> he actually threw up because he thought. <laughs> Oh man, I, I I just love those moments. I mean, they're just hilarious. And the movie was really a huge success too. I mean, out of its twenty million budget that they made in, it, it went up to uh, eighty six million dollars. So yeah, this was a true hit. It was worth it. A lot of critics loved this film too. It had an eighty nine percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, there are a few critics that didn't care for it, but that's okay. I still think it's a lot better than than. Uh, any of his later films, at least, but that's okay, because even I like those later films too. <laughs> Edward Scissorhands is just a wonderful film to watch. You, you just never forget. It, it just uh, grows on you anytime you watch it. You know, so check it out. It's it's fun. So anyway, I give Edward Scissorhands five stars. I'm Joseph Sabora. And I'll see you later. Bye.